stabil. Hi everybody, hello, hello, hello. Welcome. I hope you're all having a good day so far. Sorry about the delay, there was a technical issue, but it's resolved now, which we love. Um, so if you could all put yourself on mute, that'd be really great. And we'll get started in a second. I'll just wait for you to enter the waiting room. Fabulous. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll make a start now and more people will be coming on, I'm sure. Um, hello, welcome to the final session. I cannot believe that it's session three. I just, wow, it's been a very fast three weeks. <laughs> um, and I hope this session is going to be useful to you guys. So what I'll do is I will share my screen now with you all. And I will start the slideshow. Oh. Fabulous. So welcome from student to trainee, session three. On the agenda this evening, we're going to be going through some of my interview tips, some wellness tips, a walk through my personal journey and a feature from special guest Mira Patel, who is the nicest person you'll ever meet. She is a director at Deloitte and she trained at Latham Watkins. And I thought since I was going through my journey, it might be useful to have um, another perspective on, on law journeys for you guys. So let's jump right into it. But first, I had a bit of an intro about me. I'm sure any of you guys who've been to the other two sessions are like, we've had enough of this slide. Um, but for anyone who is watching on demand or anybody who hasn't attended a session yet, um, my name's Laura Moore. Um, I did a chemistry degree at the University of Manchester and I changed to law, did the GDL at the University of Law two years ago. Then I was a legal assistant at Freeth's, which is a top 50 UK law firm until uh, mid-August of this year, so quite recent. Um, I did a vacation scheme at Pinsa Mason's work experience at CMS. I've got nearly a 2K community on my legal Instagram, which is amazing. Um, I'm a future trainee solicitor at Pinsa Mason's and I'm just about to start my LPC in about two weeks, which is terrifying, but we move. So let's jump right into it. Step two, the assessment centre. So we went through step one in the previous webinar. If you missed that session, um, log into our gen and you'll be able to watch all of the recordings on demand after this one, which is great. So step two, the assessment centre of the interview. You're trying to build on your application, essentially. You're trying to bring it to life, which is quite a daunting experience. I know from practice, it can be a bit scary because you're like, oh no, like I've said all these great things in my application. How am I going to kind of live up to it um, in the real thing? But let's try and break it down today and make it a little bit less daunting for you guys. So what I'm going to suggest is before you do any kind of interview stuff, you want to be rereading your applications and putting your recruit hat on. So I think, what would I look, if I was a recruiter, what would I be looking for right now? Like if I was interviewing you, what would I be looking for? What skills am I looking for as a future trainee? Who do I want to employ at my company? And then another great tip is when you're looking at your CV and everything like that, you want to be thinking about what questions would I ask this person? Just try and work backwards. So you're looking at your CV thinking, oh, wow, like I've done some good stuff, but this is really interesting what questions would you ask? Because even though a lot of law firms have pretty set interview questions where they're just typical ones like why law, why me, why this firm, those kind of ones, most of them do have a personal interview where they will ask you more personal questions or things off the cuff that the interview is just genuinely interested in from your CV and you don't want to be caught out by just forgetting what you've written. Because <laughs> I've done that before where someone's asked me about an experience I've done and I've just completely forgotten on the spot, which is so easy to do, by the way. So don't feel bad if you've done that as well. Because, you know, we all have so many things to think about in an interview and it's quite stressful. So don't worry if you've, if you've been there before as well. Just try and think and work backwards and prepare if you know you're the kind of person that might like be a bit of rabbit in the headlights in the actual interview so you want to make sure that you do your research on the firm beforehand and you don't want to miss out on like the basic questions to prepare beforehand like why commercial law why me why this firm 
and also the future of the business and more commercial focused questions because this tends to throw people off when they're put on the spot in an interview I know that definitely happened to me um when I was asked about the key competitors I asked I was asked in an assessment center a couple of years ago about who are our key competitors and I knew who they were but because I hadn't done like specific research on that, I just totally just panicked in the interview and said like a random firm and didn't expand on it at all. Needless to say, I was not successful um, that round, but we move. <laughs> um, so I don't want you guys to fall into the same trap. Always look up the key competitors um, beforehand. And also that's a really easy one to look up. It, it might think it's quite a, quite a tough one, but in the previous webinars, I've, I've gone over that. And um, if you want to watch those back and see how to do that. Um, another good tip is if you know who's interviewing you on LinkedIn, um, if you know who's interviewing you, have a little look on LinkedIn, um, have a little stalk of their profile, see what they've done, see what kind of thing posts they like, if they've written any articles or anything interesting, then you can bring it up. I did that in my interview for a legal assistant. I looked at partners that was interviewing me um, beforehand. And then I'd noted down a couple of um, things that I thought could be relevant. Like one of them, for example, he'd worked on like a nanotech company deal or something. And because I'd done chemistry, I thought I was quite a good like link. And I said it in the interview and he was really impressed that I'd like gone into that much. He thought, wow, you'd gone into so much like research about me. But actually all I'd done is go on his LinkedIn and just have a quick browse like for two seconds. So it really doesn't take that much effort and can really improve your chances of looking impressive in front of the interview, which of course is what we all want. Um, so what did I do to prepare for interviews? I created a document for each firm um, that I made it to interview at. So it was essentially a one-stop shop for everything that I needed to know about that firm. So I wrote down everything that I needed in that document um, for each one separately. So I didn't get confused because it's, it's really easy to get confused between like core values and things like that between firms because a lot of them are very similar. Um, so make a separate document for each firm. Um, and then let me just show you a little example of what I did. So if I just end that here and show you this. So I don't know if you guys have seen this, um, this kind of tool before on view. There's a thing called the navigation pane, which um, I, I didn't know about until my friend told me about it actually um, a, a couple of years ago. And I found it so, 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 so useful. So what I would do is you go on the home page and you put in, you highlight um, a title of any of, of something that you're trying to um, put in bold. So like if you want to do like a leadership question or a teamwork question or something like that, you'd click there, make it into a heading. Then you'd go on to view, click the navigation pane, click this, and then they all come up down the side. So obviously I know a lot of interviews now, they're kind of in real life um, and I have my fair share in real life and online but if you have an online interview um, this is just totally amazing an amazing hack because the interviewer thinks that you're um, just thinking of all this off the top of your head when really all you're doing is just like if if they asked me what's your biggest strength I just tap that really lightly and it comes up straight away um, and you can just put any any questions that you think might come up so like what qualities might there be in a trainee that you're looking for? Why this firm? Good investment areas for the firm, a bit of commercial awareness there. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Um, just looking at all the things like that that could really add a lot of um, a lot of value. Um, I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, please um, let me know in the chat box. <laughs> um, but ho hopefully that makes sense. I definitely found this the easiest way um, Hi, everybody that just joined. <laughs> if you could just put yourself on mute, that'd be really, really good. Um, perfect. Um, so yeah, if you just want to put in all the different things along the side that you think the firm might ask you, or things that you actually want to just bring up yourself. So for example, I had like questions for the trainees as a little link down here in case one of the trainees was there um, in the interview or whatever situation it is it's just really useful to have one of these documents there um, just ready for where, whenever you need it, basically. So if we go back to the main presentation, I wanted to talk a little bit about mental well-being because I think in a lot of these webinars, people talk, they, they give you so, many, so much information and you're like, oh, like <laughs> you've just given me so many things to think about. 
Um, but I think it's really important to take a second, take a breather and just think about mental well-being and wellness. So nerves are really natural, like you're you're bound to feel that because this is important to you, right? It's important to all of us. We all want to get a training contract. We all want to be lawyers. We all want to train as solicitors. Um, so it's really natural to, to feel those nerves. But the key is you've got to con- try and control the nerves, which is a lot easier said than done. Trust me, like I... I was a nervous wreck <laughs> for like the first year that I was applying for um, for law firms, particularly coming from a non-law background. I think it can be like super daunting and you feel like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know. Um, don't know what I'm doing. But you've got to remember that part of being a lawyer is delivering that first class service. So you need to take care of, of number one in order to, to achieve that goal and live your best life. And, you know, it's so easy to get caught up with doing applications and people saying you've got to go to this event and this event and do all this. And like on top of your study, on top of your job, on top of anything else that you might have going on. So, you know, it's it's super important to make sure that you take time for yourself in this whole process because it is really draining and it is really tough. Um, so it's really good to start practicing those small habits now that will stand you instead um, for the rest of your career. So a lot of it's about mindset. So, for example, I've really got into meditation. I don't know if any of you guys um, have. Let me know in the chat box if you have. Um, But I've really got into meditation in the past year or so, and I found that really, really helpful. So I use an app called Superhuman or Calm, depending on what what I'm feeling like that day, for just small beginner meditations, like just five, ten minutes. If I'm having a stressful day or I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed, I just take pause for a second and just meditate for five or ten minutes and I find my brain is just totally cleared all the fog's cleared and I'm ready to start my next task and I think we think especially like as law students you think right I've got to go full steam ahead I can't stop for a second I can't stop and have a break like that's such a toxic view on it you need to take time for yourself it's so important so whether it's meditation whether it's journaling for example I found coloring in (laughs) and coloring in books and painting actually really useful recently I mean, that's quite an extreme one, but if, if you fancy it, definitely try it because it is really good um, for mindfulness. Positive affirmations in the mirror before you do your interview. Now, this one sounds a bit silly written down, but before any of my interviews, I'd literally look in the mirror and be like, you've got this. Like, you're amazing. You're a superstar. You're going to be great today. And it sounds silly when you say it like that, but on the day of an interview, it can be quite into you feel quite like nervous quite intimidated by the whole situation just having that moment with yourself in the mirror for five minutes can really make a big difference um doing some form of exercise to get your brain working um this is I mean I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with exercise (laughs) some days I'm like I'm not not in the mood and some days I am so um again it just depends on what suits you you might prefer meditation you might prefer exercise depending on on what suits you or you could have a combination of both but like I say law is a mental challenge this process is a mental challenge being an aspiring solicitor trying to get into trying to get into law and trying to get a training contract it is really really tough so don't forget and neglect your own mental well-being because you know it's really really important so it's the morning of the interview (laughs) help (laughs) we've all been there what I would suggest is do something for your mindfulness like I just said on the previous page whether whether you want to do meditation positive affirmations exercise whatever it is whatever floats your boat do that remember to drink plenty of water and if it's in person which most of them are now ask the interviewer for some water because what I used to do is if I wasn't sure of a question I'd take a sip of water uh, sometimes when it was a tough question, I'd end up drinking like half the <laughs> half the glass. Um, so don't don't do that. Um, but it can buy you a bit of time to just think about the question a little bit more, which is always good. And then another top tip that I have for the morning of the interview is to watch the news. Now you might think, I don't know, I don't need any more information, Lauren. Why are you suggesting this? Like I've already got so much info in my head. Like no, I don't need any more. Honestly, this is my biggest regret in some of my interviews is that I just didn't look at the news that morning because I thought the exact same thing. I was like, no, too much. I'm already, my head's already buzzing. Like I've already got so much to think about. You really want to be watching the news the morning of because sometimes interviewers like to ask questions about it. And it, there's nothing worse than being in a situation where something is so easy as just looking at the news could have got you that contract. And because you didn't do it, it's gone, which is just so frustrating. 
And as I say, even if they don't ask for it, you can still impress the interview by bringing it up in another task. So for example, one of my assessment centres last year with a different phone, one that I didn't get the training contract with in the end, um, I was at the assessment centre and they were asking, um, they, they didn't ask about um, a new story in particular in any of the questions, but in the group task, I actually found a way to incorporate something that I'd read in the news that morning about commercial awareness. And I ended up getting the highest score for commercial awareness in the group, even though I just by chance I'd looked at the news that morning and that the same thing came up um, that was in the group task. So you just never know when something might come up. So it's definitely worth doing how to nail the interview. So this is kind of my six step process um, on how to nail interviews. I think, <laughs> so some people have a love hate relationship with interviews, right? Some people love them. They think it's the easiest part of the process and the application and the assessment, um, the tests beforehand are the hardest bit, which was definitely me. But I know some people really struggle with interviews and it's the total opposite way around. Um, so this is my six step process on how to really nail the interview. So first, You've got to be yourself that first and foremost, that's the most important thing. You know, you don't want to be going for a firm where you have to pretend to be somebody that you're not or you feel like you have to act a certain way in order to get it. Because the reality is you're having to work there, you know, really long hours. And if you're around people and trying to that, that you're not really getting on with and people that, you know, you're trying to trying hard to fit in with, but you just don't. And they're just not your vibe at all, then. Why, why are you there like you don't want to be unhappy in whatever contract you get so when people say oh just go for any law firm like it's totally fine just apply to all of them and see which one you end up at like, that's definitely not good advice at all it's terrible advice like you want to be picking somewhere where you feel like you're going to be happy and you're going to be able to thrive and be yourself um and I definitely found that with some firms where I'd got to the final stage and I thought actually I don't like this firm <laughs> um, and that's totally fine to feel that way and you've got to just remember that as much as they're assessing you you're also assessing the firm right you don't want to end up at a firm that you're not happy at basically step two even if it's a partner just talk to them normally just talk to them like you just say hi to me like they're just a person who was in your shoes at the end of the day like they were at our stage at one point in their careers and I've never had a bad experience with anyone that I've spoken to but I'm, I feel very lucky for that um but you know you've just got to treat people just normally just have a normal conversation don't treat them as if they're you know they're up here and like we're all down here and we know nothing about law or anything like the people like people gravitate towards other people and, and they're not looking for a robot at the end of the day. Law has definitely changed. This The whole industry has changed. It's not the way it used to be where they were they were just looking for robots and, and people to just say the right things and stuff. Like we're, we're in a different um, space now and it, it's totally fine to go talk to a partner. They're very much like approachable and, and totally fine to speak to. Um, so don't be worried about that or intimidated by partners. Just take a deep breath and just try and remember that like 20, 30 years ago, they were in your exact position right now. Step three, which I think is probably the most important thing is to prepare bullet points to the basic questions. Now, a lot of students find this probably the hardest bit <laughs> actually in interviews. I know I definitely did um, earlier on when I, when I was in my first cycle and doing interviews because you just don't it just goes out of your head you're you're preparing for all these crazy like commercial questions and like all these like tricky m a deals and like all the, all those kind of things when the reality is they're probably not going to ask you anything about that and what ends up happening is they ask you the basic questions like why are you doing this basically so why law why are you choosing this firm like what are the positive things about you what are your strengths and when you're on the spot I, I know there'll be other people in the audience who feel the same way where you just freeze. <laughs> like I remember I was just like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to answer this. Even though it's such a basic question in the moment, you're just ready to answer all these crazy complex questions. You've totally neglected the stuff that's really easy. Um, and you don't want that to be the, um, the negative against you when they're deciding who to give the VAC scheme or the training contract to. So make sure that you've got those questions absolutely nailed down. So why law? Why me? Why this firm? Just the basic questions and you'll be absolutely fine. 
step four, take a minute to think about your answer before you say it. So don't just dive right in. This is a really good um, a piece of advice that I got from some future trainees that I, I spoke to a couple of years ago when I was doing my interviews. I think I think people think that if, if you take a second or like a pause or anything, it means you're going to think they're not, you know, that they think you're just daft and you don't know what how to answer it or anything like that. But that is not the case at all. It's really important to just take a minute to think about your answer before you say it. Don't just dive right in. Like I say, take a sip of water, take a deep breath. It's totally fine. And just remain as calm as you possibly can and take a second and a second to breathe because law interviews are intense. Like most of us have been through them before. If you haven't, you know, it is quite daunting because as I say, it means a lot to you. We all want to get into law. It means a lot to you and you do forget the basics. So that's why I'm trying to just go through this process now to tell you don't neglect those really fundamental things because it sounds really obvious when we're sitting here now but when you're in that situation and you're in that law home interview like all logic just goes out the window <laughs> for some people me <laughs> being included um and you can just you can just panic um until you learn to control it so if it's your first couple of times doing interviews don't worry at all if you're feeling a lot of nerves um because practice makes perfect Number five, ask the interviewer to repeat the question. Um, this is something that I actually did in my actual interview for the firm that I got my training contract at. Um, so it definitely doesn't hinder you because <laughs> I, I did it and got contracts. Um, so it must be fine. Um, I asked the interviewer to repeat the question three times because I just wanted to make sure that I was asked, answering the actual question he'd asked because it was a relatively complex question and I think if you've got something that's like quite a long question or just something that you're you're finding quite tricky definitely ask them to repeat it once or twice because like I say there you don't want to be answering the question you think um you know the one that's in your head because that's again it's so easily done when you're in an interview setting rub it in the headlight situation we've all been there you don't want to be answering a question that you've just invented or the one that you would like to answer rather than the one they've actually asked you, um, which was something that I was wary of when um, the partner asked me that particular question because it sounded like one that I'd prepared for, but I, I didn't quite know whether it was the same question or whether it was slightly different or like repackaged in a different way. Um, so I thought it was really, really um, important to just um, ask again, just to be clear, um, it's better to be safe than sorry than, than getting the answer completely wrong. Um, and number six, so do the other answers in the moment. So I said in, in point three to prepare those basic questions like that, but you want to make sure that you're doing your other answers in the moment. You don't want to be over scripting or over preparing other questions and, and answers because it'll just be so obvious to the interviewer and interviewers are looking for, you know, a natural, genuine answer. You don't want to be just sounding like a robot like reading off a script like and this happened and this happened because from experience I did this once um because I was feeling quite nervous so I just scripted every possible question I could I could think of and every possible answer and then when I got into the interview they'd asked me something slightly different or something that wasn't quite the same phrasing as the one that I'd prepared for and it totally threw me off because I was like wait like I've just got this completely wrong like I haven't prepared for this um, so it's just best to prepare those bullet points for the really basic questions. Like I say, why commercial law? Why this firm? Why me? Um, things like that. You don't want to be just over scripting every single thing because then you'll find yourself in a bit of a situation where the interviewer doesn't think you're being genuine and you're not giving a natural response, which we really don't want. Um, so just focus on preparing those basic questions. I thought I'd just quickly run through some hard interview questions and how to answer them, because these are probably the hardest ones that I encountered in my interviews. The first one is what negative thing would your friends say about you? Now, this is probably the worst question to ever get if you're just getting it on the spot. Um, as I say, it's not great if you've not prepared for it, as you could easily fall into the trap and tell them something actually negative about you, which we do not want. So remember, this is an interview. You're trying to impress the firm as much as possible. So you don't want to be planting the seed in their head. So if you say, for example, like I say here, my friends say I'm bad with timekeeping or I'm often late, which might be true and fair enough, good for you. But the firm will see that as bad time management. So this is the kind of question where you want to be really clever about the way you answer it. You don't want to give them something that's going to 
be a cause for concern <laughs> like that if, if you're saying you're late you don't you have no time management at all um because that, that's what they're going to think and you don't you don't want that um so in my interviews I said that my friends would call me a perfectionist just because then it would have <laughs> um, negative connotations and can be explained more logically um which is probably I mean it's the only answer I've ever come up with to that question I don't know whether you guys have any more suggestions but I think it's definitely a tricky question to try and answer and obviously everybody's answer is different but it's just really important to stress don't plant the seed in their head about something like I say like I'm bad with time or I'm at or I, I can't you know lead a team or I can't manage anything like that's just not going to be a good look for you in the interview so you don't want to do that who are our competitors and what does this firm do to stand out? Now, I recently spoke about this in one of my good versus bad posts on Instagram. So check that out on more on law for a little bit more info on this. Um, but like I say here, I type in a Google before every interview that I do the competitors of the firm and make a mental note and add it to that document that I just showed you guys, because it's just, as I say, it, it's a question that gets asked quite a lot and I was not prepared for it at all the first time I was asked it. So I don't want you guys to fall into that trap. Um, so like I say, this question is asking you to sell the firm to the interviewer. So essentially why this firm? So that's what this, that's what the question translates as, but it's just phrased in a different way. So it's what stood out to you about the firm. So what you want to do is come up with four to five points beforehand on why the firm is unique and then expand them um, into the interview. Let me just add a couple more people to the waiting room. Sorry, guys. Fabulous. Um, so yeah, you want to come up with four to five points beforehand on why the firm is unique and then expand on them in the interview. So you don't want to just be like just leaving it at the competitors. You want to be thinking about what does the firm do to stand out? Why this firm? Basically, that's what that question is translating as. So a commercially focused question. I found these the trickiest, particularly coming from a non-law background. So in order to prepare, I focused on a practice area that I was really interested in and then expanded into other areas to build up that commercial knowledge of mine. So mentioning trend as well as your own personal opinion on a matter is really important in this. Again, I spoke about it on a recent more and more post um, that I put up, but adding your personal opinion is going to set you apart from the rest. You don't want to just be saying I read a recent news story about xyz and then you're not given any analysis or anything like that you know you want to be giving your personal opinion you want to be mentioning the trends thinking about the bigger picture um and just not leaving it at surface level basically commercial awareness they're not expecting you I've, I've gone into it a little bit in the previous webinars a bit about commercial awareness but the main take home is really is that commercial awareness at our level they're not expecting you to know absolutely everything about like the ins and outs of an m a deal or like anything like that you know they're just looking for a baseline level of commercial awareness and commercial acumen and that can easily be built up um as i've explained in my previous webinars and as i say if you've if you missed those webinars you can just access them on on our gen so following on from this, I have something very exciting to show you guys. So it's my first ever brand partnership, which is so exciting with the lawyer sport. I've I've talked about them before in my story when when we were not um not in or not in partnership because I just I, I love their products. And when I when I saw this, I just thought, wow, this is such a great thing to talk about. So they've got a new product that's coming out in two weeks, which is very exciting, called their Commercial Awareness Journal. So you guys know how much I've been banging on about commercial awareness in this series. I've been talking about it in all three webinars now and how important it is. Um, and this book is just so brilliant. Like if, if I was in your shoes and I was an aspiring solicitor, I was looking for that training contract. I would definitely get something like this because it's such an easy way to keep all of your commercial stories in one place. So I don't know if you guys can see, but if you zoom in quickly on this, you can see that there's different, it's all split up into different things. So on the first bit, you've got the headline. So that's where you'd write um, the headline of the news story. Then you've got a thing called looking out. So you're looking at the wider impacts of the news story. Then you've got looking in. So you're thinking about the stakeholders. How, how are they going to react to it? And then finally down here, you're looking at the law firm involvement. So how does the law firm get involved? And then on the opposite page, you're looking at the notes. And I just think that's such a brilliant way of organizing it. Like you've got every single thing there all sorted, 
all in one place rather than having like like I did I just had like folders of like random pieces of paper it was really chaotic it wasn't structured at all I'd do a different analysis for each one whereas this you're keeping it all in the same place it's all really structured all really neat it's beautiful um and just very aesthetic and very me so I just wanted to show you guys that and I hope you purchase one and enjoy it so if, if you're after one of them they are available at the lawyerspot.com they're 25 pounds so they're not going to break the bank and I think it's definitely worth the investment um and as I say I would definitely get one um if I was a aspiring solicitor just because it keeps it, it, make, it makes you want to do a bit more on commercial awareness to be honest I think I found commercial awareness the the hardest bit to motivate myself to do because to be honest it requires the most works so having a lovely notebook to be able to write it all in would definitely have encouraged me to do a bit more um and then some other resources so i was asked in my previous webinar um i didn't get a chance to answer the question but i took a screenshot of it um just some other resources that i found really useful personally so the commercial law academy reasonably priced monthly subscription really great to build a foundation of knowledge jake Shogger's city career books i'm sure you guys have seen them all over instagram i've done giveaways with with jake before they just do amazing amazing books giveaways academy knowledge it's just oh fantastic but the thing here that I've highlighted is the thing that I think was the most um instrumental in my commercial awareness success which was the commercial law academy and Watson's daily webinars now these are free to register um for their the adverts are always being put up they're, they're every month and they're free and they are such a fantastic resource I'm sure many of you have attended them before they're just absolutely brilliant. They go through all the different commercial stories. And I remember last year I did one before uh, my big assessment centre um, for Pinter Masons. And I actually used some of the content from that in my actual assessment centre because it, I'd literally done it the day before and it just gave me all that commercial knowledge in one go. So instead of doing, you know, hundreds of hours of research on something, you can just, if you're in a rush or you're, you're panicking, you haven't done enough, um, you haven't managed to do like something in, in the previous slide with the book and do all of that if you're looking for something that's going to be a really quick one-stop shop it's obviously not completely comprehensive and it's not as good as doing it all yourself but it's a really good way to get a really digestible um look on the commercial um look for that month and then finally the corporate law academy they're really great when you're coming up to an assessment center or you want your application reviewed um they're really brilliant for that so we're on to the final little stage of this webinar now. And I thought I've talked so much in the past <laughs> three hours in total um, of this series um, about so, so much, so many actionable points. And I just thought it'd be nice to take a second to just think about my journey in the hopes that it could hopefully inspire some of you guys, because I know that it it's so difficult trying to come into this industry. It's so hard. And I think we're just surrounded by success stories no matter where you look it's just I got a training contract the first time around like I did this I did that and you can definitely feel a bit overwhelmed with it all and feel like you're behind or like whatever it is you feel because I, I I did feel like that at one point but it's all about perspective and it's the way you think about it so let me just run you through my journey so summer 2019 that was my first ever law application that was submitted at the end of my second year of university needless to say I got nothing back from that <laughs> complete just crickets nothing at all um yeah I totally was totally unaware of the whole law application process I didn't know what to do I didn't know how to do it properly um and I just thought it was just like applying to any other job um, and oh, how wrong I was. Um, <laughs> it definitely is is not. Um, so in autumn 2019, when I started back at university for my final year, my chemistry degree, I decided in the freshers week to sign up to the University Law Society to try and network, meet some new people and just attend as many open evenings and events as I could. I really just had to think on my feet and just learn as I went because I, I didn't even know what networking was like let alone what a vacation scheme or training contract was um so I just really threw myself in at the deep end just went to every single event that was on like I was just constantly in a suit like I would go to my lectures in a suit and everyone in chemistry was looking at me like what is she doing like where's her lab coat <laughs> um but you know you're gonna do what you're gonna do so it continued in January 2020 I had my first ever assessment centre 
um, and it was my first proper law interview in person, went really, really well. It was at the Manchester office of the firm I applied to. I had a great experience, learned so much, still keep in touch with the people I met on that day and they're good friends of mine now. Um, and following that, I was successful and got my vacation scheme up into Mason's um, in the summer of 2020. As I say, my vacation scheme went really well, made some of my closest friends during it that I still speak to every day now. They're the best. Um, I networked with partners, learned about what it's like to be a lawyer in such a fantastic firm. Then, uh, later in 2020, I was unsuccessful in getting a training contract. So naturally, at the time, I was really disappointed. Um, it was pretty devastating, to be honest, <laughs> at the time. I think we all work so hard to get into these firms, and if you get... Um, that far or you have an interview or have an assessment center and you get that rejection email at the end of it it does really hurt because you feel like you've given your absolute all and you're like how have I not got in like how am I ever gonna um you know manage to get in anywhere else when I've given my 100% to this firm and all those thoughts were going through my head and all my friends has got their TCs and I hadn't and I just thought oh my gosh I'm just about to start the GDL like this is so stressful um and yeah it was a really difficult time for me so yeah like I say naturally at the time I was disappointed but now on reflection, two years later, um, I can definitely say it was the best thing that ever happened to me, um, to be honest. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to, <laughs> I definitely was not thinking that at the time. Um, definitely, definitely not. But, you know, hindsight is a wonderful thing. And it actually did turn out to be the best thing that happened to me. So let me tell you why. So in autumn 2020, I started applying again for vacation schemes. I was like, I picked myself up, dust myself off. I was like, right, it's time to go. Lauren's back. Like, I'm ready. And at this point, I thought I might apply to a variety of different firms. So I prepared research documents for each firm, like I just showed you guys. And I'll provide a template of that scene as well. I'll put it in my bio along with my free CV um, thing in there. And I attended law fairs firm events just to build my confidence up again you know I went to the legal cheek law fair spoke to some of the recruiters there tried to just build up my confidence again because it is quite a knock but then in late 2020 early 2021 we get crickets so I'd received rejections from pretty much every firm that I applied to which was just devastating and didn't do anything for my confidence at the time um, it's really hard to deal with. It was the middle of the pandemic. I was trying to focus on my GDL and trying to navigate going from chemistry to, to law, which was already such a massive jump. So then to have to deal with not getting anywhere, not even getting an interview anywhere, it was just devastating. Like I just didn't know what to do. Um, but then in spring 2021, I finally got a couple of interviews, which was really promising. But like I said earlier, none of them, none of them felt quite right. I was really grateful for the interviews, of course. But it was the first time that I properly felt the feeling of like, when you know, you know, with firms, like, like I say, don't just apply to, to loads of them and just think, oh, I'll just see where I end up. You really, there is a firm for everybody and there's a firm that will suit everybody. Um, and it's important to remember that even though you get to that stage, that later stage or assessment centre or interview or whatever it is, you're there to assess them as well. It's not a final, you know, sign the contract here type deal if you're not feeling the company like why would you want to work there like it just you know you're going to be there for years you don't want it's not just like a week if you're there day in day out and you hate it it's just going to be the worst thing ever um so then July 2021 the dream firm assessment center really exciting for me to have another one at my dream firm it felt exactly the same as I did on my vacation scheme this was the right place for me I thought this is just amazing we'd love to see it um, my assessment centre went much better for me that year and I really saw my progress particularly on the commercial front in action but as last year taught me anything can happen so every I just had everything crossed um, that I'd done enough because um, quite frankly I just had no idea at all <laughs> I thought I'd done well the first time I thought I did well the second time but you there's so many factors that go into it you might be an amazing candidate but just it's a really competitive year or just there might not be enough space in that office that, that you've applied to that year there's just so many different factors so really don't take it personally if you don't get in um the first time around because I'm living proof that if you reapply you can get in at the same place so August 2021 was my big month so I used the large network that I built over on LinkedIn to get some experience. So I managed to contact the global head of a big international law firm in London 
um, of their fintech department and I hosted a large fintech um, panel webinar with some um, fintech experts which was really exciting in their London office and had three days in the financial um, regulatory department um, shadowing that global head of fintech and some of the trainees which was really really exciting experience and then as I was tidying up my desk ready to leave on that final day I got the news that I got the training contracts, which was just insane. I was just, he, the, the global head of the department was asking me, he was like, um, you know, what's your next step? And I was like, it's another round, it's another cycle for me, I think. I've not heard anything back from the firm that I did the assessment centre with, so I'm, I'm thinking it's probably bad news. And then I, I go back to my desk and see there's a missed call from my phone. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, that is just insane. Um, so that's how that happened. And then I started my legal assistant job at a top 50 UK national firm in the award-winning commercial dispute resolution team, literally like two days after that. So it was a whirlwind <laughs> 48 hours for me in August 2021. But what this story is trying to show you guys is that there are ups and downs. It can take years. You could be lucky and get it the first time around, but it is totally fine if you're feeling lost right now and you feel like, you know, oh, should I give it another go? And I really hope this series has is, is shown you guys that you can keep going and you can keep reapplying and you can get into the firm that you that you want to and you believe in your heart's the right place for you. You know, just because you get rejected once doesn't mean that you can, you know, you stay on the ground. You just got to get back up again and keep trying and keep going after your dreams. Um, and now we have special guest Mira Patel. I don't know if Mira is in the room with us right now. Let me just have a little look if I stop sharing my screen. I don't know if Mira is here. So what I'll do is I'll just, I'll give her a little bell. Bear with me, I'll be with you in a second. about the wait guys Mira is hopping on in a second I'm just giving her the new zoom link there was a bit of a, a zoom uh, issue <laughs> uh, before we came on so I'm just sending her the new link now and she'll be with us in a second Um, Lauren. Hi. Hi. Uh, will there be time to ask any questions that we may have? Um. Yeah. Go ahead now. Yeah. Um. I have a question regarding one of the first slides that you mentioned. Don't miss the future of the business type question. Uh, yeah. What with this? Pardon. What do you mean with the with the sentence? Oh, I well, I may I basically went over it in my um previous webinar a bit more in depth so it might be more useful to to watch that one back but I'm basically just talking about the future of the business um and what future challenges um the business might have so whether that might be from COVID whether it's from Brexit um just basically the future implications of of the business if that that helps <laughs> yeah thank you very much no worries Oh, Mira's just joining us now, I think. All 
right Mir is joining us now which is really exciting Hi, Mira. Hi, Lauren. Hello. I, <laughs> so I, didn't know whether, I didn't know whether I was meant to be joining on Google Meet or on Zoom. So thank <laughs> you for messaging me. <laughs> no worries. It's so lovely to have you here. Um, just to give everybody a bit of an intro on Mira. Um, she is an iconic queen. Um, she's a director at Deloitte. She trained at Latham Watkins and she previously worked at EY. And she's written a brand new book called Gets Into Law, which is really exciting. Um, and she's going to give us just a little bit of a, just a background on, on what she's done up to date um, and just a little bit more about her book. Thanks, Lauren. It's so nice to see so many people on this call. And Lauren, I think it's incredible what you're doing, firstly. Oh, thanks. And <laughs> it's amazing that you've created this space um, for people who are on this journey. And I think it's awesome to bring people together and do this. Oh. I definitely didn't have this when I was applying for training contracts, which is over 10 years ago now. Um, so I think the beauty of Zoom and social media is, is amazing. So yeah, definitely. you're super and incredible too. So, um, I can just introduce myself and tell you a little bit about me. Um, so I have a pretty traditional background. Um, I did law at university, did the LLM, did the LPC. Um, I was actually the first person in my family to go to university. Um, so for me, um, you know, going to Latham and Watkins when I was really young, I think I got offered that training contract when I was 19 or 20 and then qualifying at 24 that was that was a huge deal for me in terms of you know I I didn't go home and chat to my parents you know about how to do it I had to figure it out pretty much on my own um, and then since then following qualification I wanted to build this career that was entrepreneurial that combined business strategy law policy and really played to my strengths and I think a lot of the things I learned during that initial training contract time from being 19 to 24 have been foundational to the career that, that, that I've built later on. Um, so over the last 10 years, I've been asked to sit on leadership panels, diversity and inclusion forums. I've mentored so many students who are aspiring lawyers. And what I decided to do was to put all of my lessons and my personal blueprint into a book. And I have it here, and I know Lauren has a copy too. So it's called Get Into Law. And I'm gonna show you a few bits. So there are 10 chapters to this book and every chapter contains key takeaways at the end. So you'll see that I've put down what those key takeaways are that effectively were lessons and experiences that I had to support you on your journey and at the back of the book there is a workbook a companion workbook so effectively taking the concepts and turning it into practical action steps that you can take on your journey and the book's really about empowering students who are aspiring solicitors it's about empowering yourself to, to make that journey. And I truly believe as somebody who has taken that journey and taken it, you know, on my, pretty much on my own and figuring it out through trial and tribulation, that there is a, there's a formula to it. And if you take these steps and if you do, do the work and, and, and put, in, put in your own like soul and empowerment and leadership into it, um, success is waiting for you on the other side. So the reason I wrote this book is really to, you know, empower every young person that, that wants to be a lawyer, that aspires to be a lawyer or have a career in law. Um, my wisdom's in the book, so check it out. I've also just started an Instagram, um, which is at get into law book. So I'm going to start posting lots of content. If you've got questions, I can answer them there. Um, and I'll be doing lots of events and going around universities. So you can see my book journey there. And um, yeah, I think this space that Lauren's created, and I hope to see Lauren again very soon, uh, <laughs> is, is just incredible. So um, 
that's a little bit about me. Yeah, thank you so much. I just had a quick question for you, Mira. So what would you say is your biggest lesson throughout all of this? What, what's your biggest takeaway? If you were to tell yourself when you were at like, you know, 2021 and you were applying for law firms, what would you tell yourself? When I was 2021, I, so... I have all the takeaways in in my in my book, um, but I think mindset is so important for me. And actually, that's chapter one of the book. That's why I start with mindset, um, and it's your mindset that's going to carry you towards success. And investing in your personal mindset is so important because you will get rejections, you will get moments of self doubt, you will. You know, I'm an ethnic minority and a female. My parents didn't go to university. You know, there were moments where I was thinking, can I do this? You know, like I'm looking around and thinking, oh, maybe this isn't me. Can I really make this happen for myself? And I think having a really strong mindset is is fundamental to to getting you to the places that you want to go to, even after you've qualified as a lawyer, because it doesn't really stop after you've got your training contract. That is just the beginning. And um, your career is going to you know, develop from there. So for me, it's invest in your mindset. And it's really easy for me to say that. Have you touched upon some of this stuff already, Lauren? Yeah, I talked a little bit about mindfulness. Yeah, what did you guys say? Because it's interesting. I was just talking about different, how, how to kind of practice your own mindfulness. So I was talking about meditation. What, it depends on what works for you, doesn't it? Because some people like exercise, some people love going to the gym every day. I'm not really that person, personally. <laughs> As I said earlier, yeah. but, um, I went to a personal training session this morning in my <laughs> lot. I think, but you know, I I love meditation. I I like journaling. I like painting. Just just whatever floats your boat, really. But I think it's important to invest in your mental health because it's so easy to get swept up in all this chaos and you know doing all your work for uni but also trying to do applications on the side and network and kind of LinkedIn and there's just so many things to think about and I think just taking that like five or ten minutes at the beginning of every day just to do something for you it's just so important to get into that routine yeah the power of positive thinking yeah and 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 being around people like people on this call right where you can just find other people to to back you and create that positivity and, and learn from each other and, and sharing your experiences, um, but then elevating each other once you've you know, shared your experiences together. And I think that's you know, incredible. I, the, the people that I remember being on vacation schemes with and doing my training contract applications with are still my friends like 15 years later. You literally, I've got like soul sisters from that process <laughs> <laughs> that are still my friends. And, and it's incredible that you'll, you'll go through so many ups and downs in your career. Um, and, you know, find, finding, you know, finding people to share that journey with is really important. Yeah, definitely. I mentioned that earlier as well, that how I've still kept in touch with all my like vacation scheme girls and like they're, they're some of my best friends so I think it is really important to just invest in those relationships and I think not having the mindset of they're my competition as soon as you walk in the door I think it's really good to just think yeah these people are my friends and we're all going to work together like rather than go in there being like you know yeah there's an element of competition like training yeah, obvious, right so you can't be so naive to think it's not competitive but I think yeah Thing to say to yourself is my I'm my own competition you know I am it like I've got to show myself that I can be the best I can be and as long as you're doing that then you and you back yourself then that's the most that you can do and and, and having a strong like you said having those friends around you in that process makes you actually stronger if you've got your your group that you trust mm -hmm. that you can share ideas off and elevate each other it just makes you so much stronger um in the process so I'm excited for, for everyone on this call yeah um, yeah definitely. Do you want, do you, does anyone have any questions or what's um what's what's it all been like 
yeah does anybody have any more questions i think most of the questions in the chat box have been answered and just touching on someone's question there about um the unanswered questions last session yeah. i've either tried to address them in this one or they are actually in the previous recordings either in session one or session two um i screenshotted the ones like the questions that were in the box last time because it went ran over a little bit <laughs> and just went through them before this call and, and all of them are answered either on my more on law instagram page in the post there or on the recordings um, so all the info um, is up there. Perfect. Well, I have some more Alicia, exercises. Does Alicia want to say something? I think we've got like a hand raised. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Uh, my name is Alessia. Um, I wanted to ask you, actually, since you uh, managed to work in different firms, what was the best, let's say, working environment and the firm in which you most um, uh, had the great time out of all of them? Yeah. In terms of environment, but also uh, the work that you did, responsibilities, the uh, the flexibility and all that. So for me, I can give you my answer for me personally, um, but I think everyone is going to have a different personal answer depending on their personality. So, you know, I was, I was a, a junior lawyer and a trainee when I was at Latham. Then in the kind of middle of my career, I was at EY and then... Uh, I'm now a director at Deloitte, so I'm kind of in the senior part of my career at Deloitte. And yeah, your career does change as you as you go through these different aspects. For me personally, I recognized very early on, probably when I was about, you know, the age that maybe some of you are on this call, um, very early on, probably when I was 20, 21, 22, that I liked entrepreneurialism, I liked dynamicness, I like being at the forefront of where the law was changing and, and developing. I really got to know myself and what I liked. And those three things that I just mentioned about myself might be someone else's absolute nightmare. And they may not actually enjoy any of those things. They might like um, completely different aspects of, of work and, and what they enjoy. And I, set about trying to then build a career so after I qualified I I literally had this moment where I was like I'm going to build a career that is all of these things and I'm going to figure out how to do it um, and that's how I actually ended up in in the big four environment in, in the consulting environment and for me it it played to so many of those things that I enjoyed it allowed me to develop new businesses it allowed me to go out and speak to clients very early on um, you know, whilst, you know, whilst I was still quite junior within the big four. And I think within law firms, I think it takes much longer to get to that stage. Um, it allowed me to uh, build dynamic teams around myself and hire and hire people. And again, I think it's slightly different in law firms, it takes a little bit longer. Um, so these are some of the things that I, I really enjoyed. For me personally, it's about where can I do the best work? Where can I work with the best people? Um, and you know, where am I actually growing myself? Like if you're in a job that's not growing you or developing you, then you need to find another job. So yeah, I had different experiences. I'd say, obviously personally now, it's obviously got to be um, where I am now, but, but obviously I think the different experiences have shaped me and my career. I wouldn't be where I am now had I not had, you know, the past 10, 15 years of experience. So every, every job is a teacher. It teaches you about yourself and what you like and where, where you want to go and how you want to develop. So I think the first thing to ask yourself is what do you like and where do you think you're going to thrive? And then start finding places that match that. And again, I talk about this in chapter two of my book. It's called Know Yourself, exactly how I did that and how you can do it. Because I think ultimately that's the formula for success. You've got to be in a place that values all of that uh, for yourself. Thank you very much. Is that helpful? Yes, thank you. Perfect. Well, we have some exciting news as well, is that we're going to be having a giveaway um, with the Get Into Law book, uh, which is super exciting. You guys are the first to hear about it. Um, really, you really are. <laughs> <laughs> you really are the first. Lauren is at the um, forefront of this. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so it'll be the first ever giveaway which is super super exciting um for the book and it will be next week so stay tuned on my more and more make sure to put the bell notification on so you get the notification about the new post and i just have a final slide on my powerpoint if we just quickly hop over to that remember to follow me on more on law because there'll be so many more updates um, I'm posting at least twice a week different content you guys love my good versus bad application answers series um, so I've caught that loads more of them coming up loads more lifestyle things more wellness things like Mira was talking about I'm really into that so There'll be a lot there'll be a lot of different types of content coming up basically so stay tuned for more updates there and just a final thank you so much to everyone for attending my series there's been over 330 signups altogether because a lot of people are watching on demand on our gen so any of you who are watching on demand hi anybody who's live hi um i just want to say best of luck and thank you so much for attending the series and please feel free to get in touch if you need any more guidance have any questions i'm aware that some of you send me dms on linkedin and instagram and i will get on those tomorrow morning i've tried to get through as many as i can this week um and also just to let you know there will be a survey going around tomorrow and how you found the series and it'll be really great to read your feedback see what went well see what maybe i can improve on because i'll be doing a lot more of these events in the future so yeah and thank you so much to Mira for featuring that was wonderful and thank you to everybody who attended and I hope you all have a wonderful evening <laughs>